Okay guys, when you have a, a leak from this point here on a Worcester, um, it's never the flow sensor, or in my experience it's never been that flow sensor. It's always the flow adapter behind it, which I'll show you in a bag here. That's the flow adapter there. That sits in behind there, okay? So, to replace this part, you isolate the mains, open the hot tap, undo this nut here, pull the clip out. The clip can be quite funny and difficult to get back in. Pull the pipe towards you, pull the flow sensor out, and then grab that piece there with some pliers and yank it towards you. And more often than not, bits of debris will remain in there you need to clean out. So I'll show you that once I've undone that nut, pulled the clip out, pulled that out. Okay, so the nut's undone. Pull the clip out. Pull the pipe out, it's come with the flow sensor. That could be a pain. See the flow sensor is attached to the pipe, that can be a pain because you can't pull it all the way out. So I'm gonna wiggle the flow sensor if I can. I can't right now, it's very tight. <clears throat> oh, I forced it out. There you go, I managed to yank it out. There's the flow adapter. Um, there it is. And as you can see, there's some debris left in there. Make sure you get it all out. Look at this. Mm. So that's meant to be plastic Worcester, isn't it? Isn't that meant to be plastic? Let's see how strong your plastic is. Oh. Oh, Worcester. Where's this fabulous German engineering, eh? Wow. Well done, Worcester. Anyway, let's get this, get the rest of this out with a pick and whatnot. Take that bit out of there and put it all in the new flow adapter. Okay, so you see, there's still a little bit more debris. Hold on. Get my hands in there. Okay. So that's now clear and you're looking straight into the plate. This shiny bit at the back there is the plate heat exchanger. Sorry for this weird angle, it's just there's a wall right next to the boiler. And the O-ring is out of there because sometimes the O-ring will stay in there. Make sure the O-ring's out and it is on this one. So I'm going to clean it with a rag because it's a bit dirty. I'll clean it with a rag, change that bit and I'll show you back in a sec. So here's how it comes in here. You put these white pieces. They are like the flow restrictors and obviously this is the bit that fails and gives you high liters per minute on Worcesters. Um, that then means that you get poor hot water performance because instead of being eight liters a minute, they're ahead of a lot more. So there's one in there. I've got to get the other one out here. There's the flow restrictor in it, the colour of that tells you how much water is meant to let through and it is universal I'm sure but I can't remember. Okay so there's that, that's what it looks like. Put that in there. Like that. Put the nut on it. We're going to call this the cheese nut because it may as well be made out of cheese. Doesn't really do very much. Put the O-ring on here, one-handed. Or not. Oh, there we go. Just one O-ring on. And then this O-ring goes on here. 
can't do this one one handed. Line it up and push and you should feel it go in. There we go, that went in nicely. Um, there we go. That's gone in nicely. I will separate this so I can grease up this washer here and check the filter because there's the filter on the end of this pipe. Check that for debris. Okay, so that's all okay. So I'm going to dry it, grease it, and put it all back together. So, the first thing I'll do is uh, slide this back in. First thing I'll do is slide this back in. Okay, grease it, clean it, slide it in, then push this pipe into it. Um, but before any of that, I'm going to get that manky old washer off there, clean that and put a new washer. There's our new washer on there. This is all greased up and ready to go on. Um, something I will say about this, uh, hold on, uh, a top tip here. When this leaks here, um, it drips down onto the actuator for the diverter. And as you can see, this one's got very wet. Now, you can see this plug is soaked. Okay, generally speaking, you do not need to replace this. Unplug it, dry the harness out, and shake the motor out. I mean, this one is soaked, but you can shake this motor out usually, and once you get it dry enough, it will begin to work again. Okay, it's low voltage, it doesn't seem to damage the circuit boards uh, when they get wet like this, and generally speaking, I mean, I do carry one of these, just in case, but generally speaking, unplug that, blow it all out, take the motor off, um, which once that's unplugged it just pulls off remember the orientation of this metal these metal prongs here they go in between the two plastic bits of the motor um, slide it out give it keep shaking it shaking it shaking it you eventually get enough water out it will start to work again okay so you don't usually need to replace this so i'll get this back together plug it back in and test it okay so we're we're in i've uh Dried out that harness, you can see there's not too much water there. I took the motor out and gave it a shake. There is still water in it, I can hear it. This is all back together. The new, uh, there's the new cheese. The new cheese is there. Uh, there's the flow sensor. And uh, there's the old cheese. That's quality engineering there. Yep, yummy. When plastic is that bad, you can rub it with your finger and it will uh, come off. It's yummy. A special German cheese, that. Damn it, and I just broke my phone for you guys filming this. Anyway, looks like it still films. It needs another new screen. This will be the fifth one on this phone this year. Anyway, so we're back together and turn the mains on and see what happens. Let's see if we get sprayed in the face. We'll pretend the boiler wasn't on that whole time. So we won't really know till we turn the tap off. If it's worked. So let me do that now. I'll take you with me, but I'm going to cover the screen just so that you don't see all the house. Okay, 
say the water's off. Come back here. That's dry. There's water there, but that's. I think that's fine. We're going to check that. What I'll do is I'll dry that up with some tissue, and while I check the heat in, I'll keep an eye on it. Let's dry it up. Let's check the heating. Okay, so the boiler's running and firing for heating. That diverter valve works. Sorry, so that diverter valve works. You saw that move down. If I turn the heating off, maybe it will move back up. I'm not sure. Come on. Oh, uh, little tip when you pull these out, uh, never have them plugged into the electrics because if they move up for hot water when they're unplugged Like that see that's just moved up for hot water if they do that when they're unplugged That pin will come all the way out of the valve the actuator and you need a new one um, As far as I'm aware unless someone knows some magic way of fixing them, but I've done that I Think once I want to say once I might have done it twice actually, but yeah There we go this boiler's fixed it was leaking and it had no heat in it's fixed by Replacing the three pound pot back there and drying this all out and that's all working. So this customer gets no bill, well gets a bill three pound for parts and a fixed labour repair. I'm now going to do all the safety checks but this boiler's done and working. Okay, so then basically, I, you know, I locked it on high, done a negative fan pressure, then done the high and low combustion ratios, uh, gas rated boiler, uh, it was all okay. Um, I did advise them about that red seal, they didn't want to do about the, uh, the electrode seal, um, they didn't want to do it, but as you can see from the state of this boiler, it's not really, it's not really well looked after, that's kind of why I told them they should do that because I know that it's probably not going to be seen now for another five years but you can only tell people and they do what they've got to do. So we'll see. Okay so now you see this is me doing it on low. Uh, this boiler is meant to be 9.6 high and 9.0 low. It was uh, basically, it was only very slightly out, didn't need any adjustment, it's within uh, Worcester's tolerance. And the negative fan and the gas rate were all correct. So although it's not been looked after very well, the boiler passed all the safety checks. Uh, so it's time to move on to the next job. 